So, um, yeah, I have a lot of experience with that. One thing that I've realized recently is, and I, I knew this before, but maybe you un maybe you understand it. You know that you know it, but until you experience it, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? It's like, okay, you, you're weightless in space. Everyone knows you're weightless in space, but until you actually experience the yeah. weightlessness of space, you don't actually understand it, right? And and it's about organization of, of information. Organized informa organization of information is entirely defined by your environment. It is not in any way applicable to the needs of the individual. So, um, and I... I um, I posted. I actually posted something about this in one of my one of my articles recently. It was about a rat. It was called the the rat test or the rat cage study or something, where um, a group of scientists did something really unethical. Is they got they got a group of rats addicted to like morphine or cocaine or something. Yeah. So I don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, maybe you, maybe you just want to get a supply of cocaine or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So they got rats addicted to it, and they wanted to get rats off these uh, addictive drugs and they discovered that the rats that they allowed to have free play um, those rats became less interested in the drugs but yeah. the rats where they, they lived in very tightly controlled environments like as in simulated inner city environments um, uh, remained addicted mm -hmm. and and it, it it showed the power of the environment and I have noticed that depending upon where I lived and I've now lived in four different places in the last year, right? Mm -hmm. Just over the last year and a half I've lived in four different places and depending upon where I lived I completely had to reschedule and reorganize the way that I did things because I had to fit myself into the environment. I could not in any way fit the environment into what I was doing. I had to find a way of reorganizing everything that I d that I that I do to fit into the environment. And um I find this very interesting because we tend to think that we're in control of what we do. We are in control of what we do, but we're not as in control of it as the environment is in control of us ever. And so so in order to be successful everywhere you have to be completely able to adapt and the adaption for me has been to do the same things but in a different order so i, mm. I do the same things wherever i've lived i do the same things but i do them in different ways and at different times of the day so the content is the same like somebody who follows like my, my youtube channel will see basically very little difference in the upload of content Mm -hmm. But the way in which the content has been created and where and when and how the content has been created has been completely different because it needed to be. So I'm finding right now that I'm here in, in the north of Scotland that I once again, that the, the, the organization that I had in, I've actually lived in five different environments actually in the last year and a half, I forgot what I went, so five different places. In each place, I had to completely restructure and reorganize everything I did to make it successful. Mm -hmm. I was not able to use the same structure in the same way in all those different places. And this adaptability is what keeps people one step ahead of technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the technology can't adapt. Technology is fixed. It's not going to change itself. It's mm -hmm. going to react to what people do, but it's not going to change itself. The technology is always going to be one step behind people. It's going to be really close, mm -hmm. get closer, but it's always going to be behind us. So no matter what we do with technology, no matter how we program it, it's always going, it, it's always going to be a little bit behind what, what, what human beings can do. That's also why artificial intelligence is an oxymoron, because intelligence requires independent thought. Computers can't be independent because they fun function in a binary system. Therefore, artificial intelligence is actually impossible. What is possible is machine learning. Machines can learn things from people, but they can't surpass people in terms of creativity, and it's creativity that makes things better. Mm -hmm. So, So... I'm finding right now that what I, when I lived 
by myself for a period of time in in, in B Street. So what worked there didn't work when I lived out in the countryside. I had to change my everything I was doing to make it work in the countryside. Then when I moved back to the city and lived with my family in the city, I had to change it again to work in that environment. Then when I went to Finland, I had to change everything again to work in that environment. And when I came to Scotland, I had to change everything again to make it work here. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting that that we have to be able to adapt. And adaptation is the key to consistent human success, especially if we want progress, and progress means change, and change means doing things in different ways and being in different places, and um, even if our output is the same, we still have to change what we do depending upon the environment, because things like weather, as we've seen today from, <laughs> from, uh, from our conversation, even things like that, even the number of clouds in the sky mm-hmm. change the way that you have to do things on a daily basis. Yeah, in Scotland, especially in Scotland. <laughs> I'm just joking, so. No, you're, it's not a joke, it's real. Yeah, yeah. It's real, yeah. it's absolutely real. Right, if, if, if I see sunshine, I'm like, a, I'm like a cat, right? If I see sunshine, I'm like, ooh, I go and sit in the sunshine for five minutes, because I don't know when I'm going to see it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like you know, like a cat always finds the warmest space to <laughs> to mm-hmm. sleep in. So um, I'm a bit like that. So um, you know that that's interesting because you know when we work with technology and data, uh, uh, we're building fixed systems, and they they're going to be good systems, and the data is going to be useful that we get from it. But uh, but as long as people are creative, then technology doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> mm. might be stronger than us, but it's not going to be more creative than us. And as you clearly pointed out earlier in the conversation, the amount of muscle work that was required by a human being has declined for most people over the last 200 years. Mm. Where we've used you know, we've replaced muscles with, with technology, uh, which is fine. If it makes life easier, that's great. If my three-year-old can walk into the kitchen and say, hey, I want to hear this song, and instantly the song gets played, like, wow, you know, I wasn't, yeah, I was like, my, I'll tell you what, I only learned that, I only learned that skill about two days before my daughter learned it, right? Yeah. So I learned that skill at the age of 43, mm-hmm. and she learned yeah. it at the age of three. <laughs> That's wild. It's great. 